boat. It's mobile, it's sufficient, it's efficient. I have my solar panel, I have everything I need. I depend on no one aboard that boat. And that's the beauty of it. It's because it's self-sufficient for the most part. And it's that whole experience that, that I like. We are planning on crossing the Gulf Stream into the Bahamas soon. We're ready to go. Well, the engine's not quite ready to go. But the Gulf Stream flows north, and it flows at a pretty rapid pace. And so we want winds that come from the south. Because if we get any winds that come from the north, the waves will build up, and it can get pretty rough. Southeast, yep. 15 knots. Yep. Now it's turning west. That's a real small window. That's a 12-hour window. The one today? No, the one on Monday. 20 knots. 2 a.m. on Monday coming from the east. Are you gonna leave then? 2 a.m.? Yeah. yeah. I think living on a boat means more th things more complicated. It's not simple living. It's actually more complicated. Because there's always something to fix. There's always you're always concerned about having enough electricity to do the things you wanna do. When am I gonna run out of fuel for my stove or for my engine? That's it. There's no wind. My engine has stopped running, and I am here trying to tinker with the engine. Um, I'm out here bobbing about. I wish I knew more about engines than I do. I don't know enough. I don't. Or how yeah, can I generate suction. more power? Or water? When am I going to run out of water? I just open the little thing on jigger, put the hose in, sit here until it fills up. I can carry 40 gallons of water and 20 gallons of fuel, and I'll be full. And then two Jerry Jacks on my deck with a total of 10 additional gallons of fuel. So I will be topped up with water and fuel when I head to the Bahamas tomorrow, hopefully. It's been a long time. We've been trying to go for about a month, but there's been engine issue after engine issue after engine issue. There's a lot of work involved in living on a boat and a lot of know-how. It's very light and we have to make faster than four knots to get to our destination before the small 40 knots of wind. And well our destination is really more over there, but that would be directly up north. So I gotta check my fuel levels. It's like I'm really conscious and really aware of my energy use of, of the things, the basic needs that I need to live. I'm really conscious of that and how to get them for myself, how to meet those basic needs. 799 hours, 13 inches. We've been motoring for 25.8 hours since the last fuel up. Electricity aboard a boat is a very interesting thing because I have one 130 watt solar panel. There's no way you could run even a regular size refrigerator in a house on a, on a single 130 watt panel, let alone the microwave and the TV and all of those things. I mean, it would take a whole lot of panels, solar panels, to run a house or even a small apartment, but I only have one. My solar panel gives me, most of the time, all the electricity I need to run all the electronics that I run on it. And I, don't, I think the key for me is that I have very little electronics aboard Daphne. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, this is Daphne on 6-8. Uh, Daphne, 6-9? I have a VHF radio, which is on the entire time I'm sailing. And that's to communicate with other boats out there. And I have, uh, I like to run my computer every once in a while to write. This is the refrigerator, the ice box. I do have a refrigerator, or an ice box. There's no, there's no freezer. And that's running all the time, except I, I monitor that one and I often turn it off if it's a cloudy day, I'll turn it off or I'll turn it off at night because it's cooler at night, it's cooler on cloudy days and there's no sun to generate electricity. So on one hand I need less, I need the, I need the refrigerator to be working less because it's a cooler day and on the other hand I have less power to keep it working. So um, I'll turn that off, I monitor that pretty closely. I have had a GPS. It doesn't really work anymore. There she is, the monitor, and there's the chafe. The monitor helps me steering. It's like my second hand so that I can move about the boat and do other things like cooking, going to the bathroom, and setting the sails. 
and the monitor steers according to the wind. It's fantastic. Little gadget. Um, so when it's broken, I need to fix it. And right now I have a really pr bad problem with chafe, and I don't know where it's coming from, but I need to replace that line and solve the problem so it doesn't happen again. Oh, this is the wrong one. It crisscross. There's the monitor. Finally, finally, I got it to work. Hooray! Everything I'm using is run on DC power instead of AC power, except my computer. So I have to invert that. I have a lot of learning to do about electricity, and I'm learning. I <laughs> and all I know is that I have a battery monitor, my solar panel charges my battery, and I have to keep an eye on that battery monitor because when it reaches a certain point, I have to start shutting things off. And I keep, I mean, you know, things are a priority. The, the VHF radio has to be on when I'm sailing, that's a priority. Yeah, I was thinking about tacking. I think we can make this run. It's nice to keep my refrigerator on so my food keeps cool, and then I have to have enough battery power left in my battery to start the engine. So those are the priorities. Okay, so right over there is the dock that I'm gonna go alongside and fuel up. For the first time on this trip, because I have this much fuel, one and a half inches of fuel left. Well, I have diesel. I have about 21 gallons of diesel that I can hold aboard Daphne, and that's for running the engine. And the engine obviously charges the two batteries that I carry. And if I'm not generating enough electricity with my solar panel and I needed electricity, I could run my engine. But I try not to do that. Yeah. So you can do the shoulder press without any hands. <laughs> Here? I cook with propane. I have a propane, a two burner propane stove, and it has a little broiler, but I don't have an oven. And that's all I have for power. When you can sail and turn off the engine, it's so much better. I would say that I would sail probably 90% of the time. I try to sail all the time. When you have to sail, you have to think about things because you have to adjust the sails to the angle of the wind and that sort of thing to propel yourself in the direction you want to go. I think living on a boat, it's more authentic. It seems like it's more real living. Like every day-to-day -day life has not been made easier by gadgetry and things like that. We finally made it to the Bahamas! Well, it looks like it's bath day for the small ship Daphne. <laughs> How's it feel over there? Good. Clean. How many days has it been since you took a shower? I think we lost count. There's where we started from right there. We came all the way south of Key Biscayne, and this is our path. And so I'll just sit here in the cockpit with my sunscreen and my books and my water and my binoculars and hang out and enjoy the view. And it's a nice easy sail right now. It's going to be a nice day. <laughs>